Everybody, as we're standing, let's turn to each other and wish each other Easter joy today. Say that to someone else. Easter joy today. Easter joy today. Easter joy today. Easter joy Easter joy today. Easter joy. Easter joy. So here we are on Easter Day. And this is a day where we should pause and celebrate and have some fun. I know some people are hyped up on chocolate already. So, you know, we'll see how we go. And hello to people at home. If you're watching this video and you think, gosh, what's going to make this go with a zing? Just you walk right into the kitchen and take out one of those Easter eggs or a hot cross bun or a piece of toast and honey or something like that and uh, enjoy that as you're watching the video. Here's the call to worship, friends. This is our time to receive again the God who never left us. God, God creating always, finds us over and over. Let us rejoice that the Easter story speaks to us. God, God moving always, invites us into newness. We celebrate the joy and excitement of being alive. God, the mystery of life over death leads us to rekindle the flame that lives once more in us. Riley, could I trouble you to come and light a candle, please? So he said. So there we are, the candles are lit. The flame is burning. So we're going to sing a classic Easter song. Christ the Lord is risen today. Not written originally with the hallelujahs, actually. I think they were inserted afterwards. But we are going to have them. Thank you. And the singers are coming up the front, aren't they? Oh, yes. To give us, come on, come on. Are we to sing this with feet? With, well, apparently. You come up here and say yes. that, Rachel. <laughs> come up here and repeat what you said. <laughs> what did you want to say to people, Rachel? We will sing this with feeling. <laughs> <laughs>
up from Rachel. <laughs>
And the second reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. A Quaker Easter message by George Amos Jr. I'm experiencing the resurrection story in a novel way this morning. Today, I am the earth, the place where events happen, the source of raw materials, a silent and seemingly powerless witness to human activity. I see the light of my life, the love of my heart, walking in human form upon my harsh surface. And I see human nature, which is my nature too, for I am famous, rise up and seize him. And then, using my tree and my oar and my stone, human nature crucifies him. And I tremble as I see this, as I watch him die. Still trembling, I watch it take him down from the cross, drag him into one of my empty places, and seal the opening with a stone. I tremble so violently that I am quaking, but soon my shaking breaks loose the stone, which shatters as it falls. And then I see then that as a result of my quaking, of my reaction to the horrors of the dark side of human nature, I have made of his tomb a womb, releasing his spirit into the world. You might be in one of the only Presbyterian churches in New Zealand where the worship leader is dressed like an Easter egg (laughs) and wearing rabbit ears. This is a new beginning. (laughs) Friends, let's pray. Dear God, on this Easter day, Guide us to see new possibilities for living, for living in relationship with you and as your presence in the world. Amen. For many years, more than a decade, we went away at Easter with our friends Nan and Susan, four Easter bunnies. Reverend Susan, who is a Methodist presbyter, was no longer in parish ministry at this time, and as a district superintendent, she could be away at Easter. Well, we haven't been able to go away in the last couple of years, but in time, we'll she'll get back to it. Because our inner Easter bunny persists. Anyway, we went to all sorts of places, and every Easter Sunday, wore our bunny ears for the whole day when we were sightseeing, when we went to restaurants, even to church. We were photographed in Matakana and made it into the newspaper. 
We've worn our ears in cathedrals. We've been to uniting churches in Australia. We've been to churches in New Zealand. We've been to a couple of surprising places. They were also surprised. <laughs> and the ears have generally been a hit. A special delight was when we walked into one worship space and a little girl at the front, dressed in her Easter finery, tugged at the sleeve of her mum's top and said, See, mummy, they're allowed to wear their ears. <laughs> and she reached down under the pew and brought hers out. <laughs> and that was at St Andrews on the Terrace. You'd think, wow, you can wear Easter ears here. We did. Because Easter is a time to rethink our ideas. It's a time to rethink the rules. And it was a very joyous service. I want to tell you a famous story about a rethink. This is a very well-known story, and I don't know its origin. It's often told in sermons. This is my version of it. And there was once an abbot who worried about his monastery. It had been a fine institution, but times were tough. People from the nearby town had drifted away from the services at the monastery, and giving had declined. The paint was peeling on the walls. Roof tiles slipped off in every shower of rain, and there were more leaks inside the buildings than the monks owned buckets. The whole place was in decline, and the monks were miserable about it. Some of them even said, we're going to have to leave and go to find a more upmarket kind of monastery. Well, the abbot didn't know what to do, so he went to talk with his good friend, the local rabbi. He explained the situation. The rabbi listened for a long time. And after a while, he lifted his eyebrows in surprise. You surprise me, my friend, said the rabbi. We have always held your monastery in the highest regard. Because we know that right there in your monastery, the Messiah is among you. And we are waiting for him to reveal himself as such. Wow! The abbot thanked his friend and walked home in a very thoughtful manner. Upon entering the gate, he started to look anew at the brothers in the yard. Brother Lawrence the gardener, he could be the Messiah. Father Thomas the cook, he might very well be the Messiah. He was always feeding people. The librarian brother, all those books, all that knowledge, probably the Messiah. Father Simon the Bursa, he knew how to make two and two equal four. Perhaps he was the Messiah. And the rest. One of them was the Messiah. The abbot had always been a kind and wise leader, but what extra care he showed now to each one. And the monks, in return, picked up on the vibe. The abbot shared the news with them, actually. He told them what he had heard, and everyone started to look upon each other with newfound respect. Well, word got out. This was a community of such kindness and hospitality that people from towns near and far flocked to visit the place. They wanted to be part of the experience. Videos went out from people on the spot, shared via social media. The donations poured in. All of the original monks stayed and others asked to join the order. 
The monastery undertook all sorts of repairs. They bought their own harp. One of the brothers got lessons from a church's lead harpist. She came in and taught him how to play the harp. They bought their own video camera. One of their videos put up on YouTube was picked up by Come to Quiet and played there. They knew they had hit the big time. Wow. The abbot knew that all this was due to the truth that the Messiah was present among them even though they did not yet know who it was. The monastery was on this great new journey of success and faithful witness. What happened, do you think? What happened at the monastery? It grew. It grew? Yeah, it absolutely grew. Why did it grow? Because they thought the Messiah was present. That's right, Linda. They thought the Messiah was present. The action of treating everyone with respect transformed the place and its fortunes. But you know, nothing had changed in its environment. Had the monastery shifted sites? Had it been moved somewhere else? No. Had the rain stopped raining so the roof didn't leak? No. Was the abbot voted out and a new leader installed? No. No one bought any more buckets. Not even the monks moved on. All the same monks were there and more came. The only thing that had changed was attitude. Because everybody behaved as though somebody else was the Messiah. Talking about attitude, in the reading from the Gospel we heard today, the women come to see the tomb. And I just love how the angel rolls back the stone and sits on it, kind of chilling, hanging out, knowing that people will turn up. People love a monument. Well, he's not here, says the angel. He's gone on ahead of you. Go home. Go back to people. That is where you will find him. And every year, friends, we need Easter Sunday to remind us that Jesus showed the way of life over death. The hurts and regrets and questions, some hard realities we managed to face on Friday, were not the last word. They never are. From the beginning of storytelling, humans forged tales of regeneration and rebirth. Jesus showed that from the repertoire of stories available to us, we might choose the ones which affirm life and move us forward. He added his own to show us how. Choose to affirm life. To be raised in Christ is one way of saying it. It's not an easy shift. So often what happens to us feels brutal and death-like. But if we linger, trying to stare into the tomb of what has been, we will not learn to see from the viewpoint of Jesus, staring back, past the stove, out into the community of forgiven and hopeful humanity, into the world of the living, into our world, where God has placed us to thrive and to support others in their thriving. Where do we find the Messiah? By staring into a tomb? By staring into emptiness? Or do we look where we are, into the midst of our lives? What's the perspective that we choose? Are we trying to see in to what has been? 
or will we look from the inside out to what will be? It's our choice. So it is. Amen. The reading is called The Heart of Stone by Joy Cowley. <clears throat> there are times when I've cried out, God, give me back my heart of stone and a ladder so that I can climb up to my head and live there, with doors and windows shut on feeding. God, God, I'm tired of all the hurt. For a little while, let me live a second-hand life. Let me tread the safe path of other people's ideas. Just let me drop this awesome responsibility you have given me to grow through love and pain. <clears throat> then I remember what it's like to exist with a heart of stone. How cold and dead I felt inside and how divided the world was when viewed without love in my heart. Remembering, I pour myself before God and whisper into his waiting. My God, there is no going back. It has to be a soft heart, one that is vulnerable to the love and wounding which is life, which is growth, which is you. Keep within me, my God, the heart of flesh. Given 
through our community. Time, food, money, care and company. We appreciate and express gratitude for the expertise shared across all the different aspects of our worship and community life. And pray that the giving in all the forms it takes in this place may reach out for the greater good in the community, the wider community around about us. We're thankful for the structure of the church year, as it helps us to pause and to reconnect with stories that guide us in our living. Stories that lead us to be hopeful for the days ahead. We know that through the teaching of Easter, we have ways to process hurt and betrayal, death and destruction, so that they are not the last word for us. May we apply that thinking to the news we receive. As we pray for peace, desperately hope for it in Ukraine, the Middle East and other places. God, may we be peacemakers in our hearts and in our actions towards others. Guide us, God. What do we do to keep showing love where it is needed? We pray for all who work for peace, for healers and negotiators, carers and counsellors, leaders, advocates, protesters and donors. We continue to pray for governments and those who advise them, for those whose commitment to debate and transparency is served through opposition, and for all who advance the cause of information that is free and without bias. Free and without bias, these are precious qualities, given the systems we have shaped. Guide us, God. What do we do to keep showing love where it is needed? And as we celebrate our life together, we pray for Reverend Jin Sook Kim, keeping our hearts open to her gifts. We know that she holds us in prayer. May we relish the experience of getting to know each other and finding our shared identity in the Spirit. And God, we now bring into mind people connected with this community, some we know to be unwell or who are unable to come to church as they would wish. We just think over their names. Guide us, God. What do we do to keep showing love where it is needed? And now our families and friends. We hold space in our hearts for their concerns and joys, even if questions come to mind. Let us sit with what we do not know and with what we do. Guide us, God. What do we do to keep showing love where it is needed? Help us to receive the love abundant that is coming to us, to look for it in the very heart of ourselves where we are at home, to look for it in the next person. Guide us, God. What do we do to keep receiving love where it is flowing? May we live looking outwards in this season of Easter, for the stone has been rolled away and we are shown a new way. In the name of Jesus, the way shower, we pray. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> Notices and sharing. What's this a picture of? Who can remember this event? Anybody there? Carol, we'll ask you, what do you think was going on? A parade. A parade. Yep. Good, good guess. It was the opening of the Harbour Bridge. Oh. One imagines it was a historic parade, a reenactment. So that's what it was. 
Uh, right on to the next slide. So, celebration concert on the 6th of May, and there are some flyers which have been given out. Community breakfast, which is next week. Kathy can't be in church today. She's uh, not feeling so well this morning. But I know that she and the team will be looking forward to having some Office of Help next Sunday for the community breakfast. And the following Sunday is communion with Colin. So he will be here to uh, lead worship and to offer a communion service, which will include an element of thanksgiving for a very special member of this congregation. So you'll want to be here for that. Helen has moved forward. Come and tell us. I see that uh, Greg has included Come to Quiet on his notices there, just to remind you that it's this coming Tuesday. There were quite a few things in, in Greg's sermon today which uh, resounded with me. The story about the monks is quite apt. I've got a message this week from Contemplative Outreach, which is where Thomas Keating was the abbot for many years. And the monks there are in a very bad place. They uh, there are rumours flying around that snow mass is going to be sold um, and so if you could hold them in your prayers. The other thing uh, that Greg mentioned was the Live Oak Meeting House in Houston where we had the privilege of worshipping with our little car in several times and the, it is a, a light sculpture, the whole meeting house. It has a uh, an opening in the roof like you saw with the clouds and the sky but to be there at dusk as the light changes is, is, is really an experience and the, the sky you would not think that there are so many shades of blue as the sky darkens and then you see the first stars appearing so it's, it's really quite an experience. People go there and lie on their backs and experience this. Um, so Tuesday we will continue. We, our theme for this year is investigating interspirituality. Anybody is welcome to come. Seven on Tuesday. I didn't know you had been there. What a wonderful thing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Digital seniors, Nan wants to talk to us about digital seniors, don't you, Nan? Oh, <laughs> did, I, did I fail to mention that to you? <laughs> well, digital seniors started down in the Wairapa, and it's a group of people who are coaches who work with older people who have any kind of computer or phone or anything problems they want some help with. It may be just something quite simple, like how to put things into a file. It may be things that are very complicated. The coaches meet in various libraries around the shore. The one in Birkenhead, they come on a Thursday afternoon. I think Glenfield is a Wednesday. Takapona is Saturday. I remember East Coast Bay must be Tuesday, but it's all in a little flyer that Greg's got there. Uh, at the moment, people just drop in, they don't have to make any appointments. You wander in with your phone or your device or whatever and ask for assistance and somebody there will help you, uh, try to help you. And mostly they have really good results. It's one-on-one. -on -one. There's no judgment, there's nobody saying, for goodness sake, surely you can do that. Um, it's very, um, very straightforward. Um, I'm there, I go as an observer, I really don't know enough to help people, but the people who are really helping are amazing. And if they don't know something, they ask each other, they Google it, they find an answer somewhere. So if you feel there's something about your device that really you'd like a bit of help with, digital seniors. Thank you, Mary. Let's sing this. Song. We had it not long ago. It's the wonderful joy dying piece. God who sets us on a journey to discover, dream and grow. And that is a great piece today message. So sing us forward again so that we sing with gusto and thank you. Good and please. <laughs>
serenity to accept the people I cannot change and the courage to change the one I can and the wisdom to know that one is me. <laughs> Thank you.